can push this one to overtime. What do you look for on this shot here? I don't think you allow them the three-point opportunity. Now, you have to commit that foul with about two to three seconds. As they come in, boom, force them to the line. You don't want to have the opportunity where they come down and get a four-point opportunity out. Colby Lewis gets it in to Henry, and there you go. Foul by Lindsey before the shot. And you're exactly right, Dave. So they're going to put him at the line. We've seen a lot of games come down to this situation. I don't think a lot of teams do that. They, call. they don't. And I don't understand why. Follow him that far from the pool, from the back. He'll probably get you. He's not going to make the shot. You don't sell out a tackle it so that it's two shots in the ball. You just make contact. The officials are trained to look for it. They're going to call the foul, and now you're going to have to get the ball to the foul to try and end the basketball. 18 foul of fire, so a one and one. Henry hits the first. Oh, oh no, a lot of technical foul here. Bruce is called for a technical. After the main free throw. Whoa. Let's wait and see the officials sort this one out. There's the one and one. Williams just shoves Clayton down. They're checking Mike Thorne. Here's Thorne on the body of screen. There is Clayton. Williams shoves Clayton, David, and they call for a technical foul. I don't know what he's thinking in that situation. He was tangled up. He said, get off of me. You cannot lose your cool in that situation. Everything is going your way, and he lost his cool. He gave the official a reason to call. So Perrier Henry was at the line for a one and one. He makes the first free throw. At the end of it, Derek Williams here for Richmond just Shoves Willie Clayton for Charlotte out of the way. He's called for a technical foul with 4.7 seconds to go. Here it is again. Now, I don't think it's a malicious shove. I think it's the tangle. He wants to get him off of him. But you can't put yourself in that situation. The officials are still talking it over here. They are. They are discussing this. And again, there are you know, a number of reasons you can use the monitor but there are other ones you cannot. Again, to use the monitor, plausible reason for a fifth pick, they missed a flagrant two. They can conclude it was a flagrant one. Flagrant one is unnecessary contact. Flagrant two is unnecessary and excessive contact. It's an automatic flagrant one if it's unintentional but above the shoulders. They take headshots out. They will now talk with the two coaches how they're going to handle it. It looks like Alan Major, not saying too much, knows it's going his way. Can you imagine this? Richmond on top by three. They use the strategy of what you talked about, David, to foul. They put Charlotte at the line so they don't have a chance to tie it with a three-pointer, and then all this happens. Chris Mooney is irate. Potentially the worst, you know, than a tie game at this point. Probably thinking there's no way that we lose in this situation. It's going to be now all of a sudden. Charlotte's going to have a chance to perhaps take the lead here. <laughs> Perry and Henry is going to shoot one more of his one and one. Then they will choose the shooter on a shooting Perry and Henry to shoot two more on the technical. He's talking over right now. Look around here, he's stuck it. The one and one, he made the first initial foul. One point ball game, now he gets the two free throws for the technical. Charlotte can take the lead by one.
And they're going to choose, I think they're going to choose Blake and Blake, yeah, to do one. Yeah. But I'm thinking that you have, it's a technical, you can choose who you want. Unless they're going to call it a personal foul. If it's a technical, the rule book says that the, you can choose who you want on a technical. Chris Mooney wants them to force Clayton to shoot it. But if it's a technical foul, as has been announced, you can choose who you want. And if Chris is wrong on that, he believes that they should be having Clayton shoot it. That's not what the rule book says. Henry gets the wall. You have to wrap the wall. They choose Henry and why not? He's a 71% free throw shooter. Clayton is just 50%. So you can see why Chris Mooney was trying to make his case for Richmond. And Charlotte's going to get the basketball because it's a dead ball technical. Davis checks in for Richmond. 4.7 seconds to go. Williams goes back out. It is Charlotte basketball right in front of us. They were down three. Perrier Henry hits four free throws. They have the ball, and now Richmond, in a crazy sequence, they have to foul right away. And Robbins fouls Henry. This game is not over because two free throws with two eight is still going to allow Richmond a pretty good catch and shot to try and hit a three to foul. I think they just caught Chris Mooney for a second. Oh, he's all the way up on half court. And it has just all the way up. And he got caught. He lost his pool. He cannot have it. I don't care if the official is the call. You cannot lose your pool in this situation. He's a wonderful coach. He lost his pool. He's been ejected. His team still had a chance in the ball game. It cannot happen. You cannot do this. You talk to your kids about not losing their pool. He cannot come out to the court, and his assistants have got to be quicker to get him back. You have to read and manage the situation. It's unfortunate that's going to cost them the ball game. Talk about an unravel for the Spiders. <laughs> They're on top by three, 63 to 60. There's just over five seconds to go. They fouled this man, Harry A. Henry. So they wouldn't let him get off a three-pointer, perhaps tie. And now after all this, he has been set, and he can score a free throw. He's going to get two more, because it's a double technical that leads to the ejection. I mean, this is devastating to Richmond. Just devastating. They had the game in control but not locked up, and they melted down. Claire and coach, Derek Williams and Chris Moore. Henry, he missed his first of the day. He's got 11 for 12 on the free throw line. He's got 27 points, and it's like a free throw shooting contest here right now for Henry and Charlotte. Seven points, make it eight points in the last three seconds. Now the technical free throw. Second technical. Yeah. He got the two for the foul at half court, and it's four technical free throws. People who look at this score later will say, oh, Charlotte won you know, 69 63. They had it okay. I'll be honest, I'll be losing a few seconds to go. I'll be honest here, David. I'm losing a little bit of track on how many free throws that are going on right now for Charlotte here. It's out of control. A technical foul on Derek Williams started it all after a made free throw by Charlotte. And then head coach Chris Mooney ejected. And Charlotte has gone from a three point deficit with 5.9 seconds left in the game to a five-point lead with 2.8 seconds left. I've never seen anything like this before. I have not either. I have, I've seen a lot in 30 years in the game. I have not seen this. 
That's going to win. And Lindsay takes it out. And Charlotte comes back. Ten point deficit today. And at the end, in one of the craziest finishes you'll see, wins it by five over Richmond to advance to the quarterfinals to take out the number one seed, St. Louis, tomorrow at 12 noon.